base your vows to each other today on your commitment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Only by His grace will you be able to keep these vows. I hope that God gives you both a good long life and that you will live to celebrate many anniversaries in the years ahead. Those years will either improve your marriage or ruin it. They will either draw you closer to each other or divide you from each other. They will either bring you joy and unity or sorrow and bondage. So I charge you today to make three commitments, starting right now, that will make these years the kind you truly desire and the kind we desire for you. First, commit yourselves to your vows. There's no question in the Bible that God intends marriage to be a permanent bond. Therefore, you are not to follow the trends of modern society. The covenant you make today is based on trust and faith. The two of you agreeing publicly to do what you have already privately agreed to do. You make your vows today in the presence of Almighty God. He will remember your vows and will hold you responsible for them. Among your wedding gifts, you will find a copy of your vows that you can post in your home as a reminder to you. Second, commit yourselves to each other. Each of you is so important to God that he sacrificed his son, Jesus Christ, for you. You need to be that important to each other as well. A truly godly marriage requires that each of you sacrifice yourself for the other. As far as your marriage is concerned, you must put aside your own pleasure and spend the rest of your lives discovering and serving each other in your likes and dislikes, your joys and sorrows, your successes and struggles. No matter what life holds for you, cling closely to each other, maintaining an attitude of openness and forgiveness so that your home will always be a refuge for each of you. Third, most important, commit yourselves to God and His book. Both of you love God. He wants to be top priority and central in your marriage. Marriage is like a triangle with God at the top and the two of you at the lower corners. As the two of you move toward the top or toward the Lord, the closer you will move to, toward each other. God alone can give true security to your marriage. Take the time to build that relationship with Him. Both of you trust the Bible. This book must be central in your home. When you are alone and when you are together, this book must be read, studied, and obeyed so that its principles can bring the joy of heaven to your marriage and home. The world has its own ideas and patterns for marriage, but don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Chart God's course for your marriage, and each year that passes will bring a greater and more enduring joy to your relationship. Now it is time for you to make your vows to each other. Alex, to you has been given the responsibility of leadership in this marriage. But the scriptures require that you lead in an understanding way, that you guide this marriage out of love and concern for your wife, that you grant her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, and that you love her as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So Alex, I have a question. Do you take this woman to be your wedded wife? Do you pledge to give her special honor as unto the weaker vessel, to dwell with her according to knowledge and understanding? And do you also promise that you will be faithful to her and pure in all other relationships, lest you sin against God and blaspheme his holy name? Is that loud? You want it in there? That's okay. Mic? Not yet. Okay. I do. <laughs> We'll just make sure everybody heard that. I do. All right. <laughs> Sarah, to you God has given the pleasure and fulfillment of being a helper suitable for Alex. As you beautify yourself with a meek and quiet spirit, you will become to him his dearest treasure on earth. As you yield to his love, you will discover that you, above all others, have the power to meet his deepest needs. And as you follow his leadership, you will find for yourself the true security which God gives to those under the authority of another. So Sarah, I have a question for you. 
Sarah, do you take this man to be your wedded husband? Will you adorn yourself with a meek and quiet spirit, and will you acknowledge him gladly as the head of your home? And do you also promise that you will be faithful to him and pure in all other relationships, lest you sin against God and blaspheme his holy name? I do. All right, since it is your desire to take each other as husband and wife, please share the purposes and vows that you have written for each other. Alex, we'll start with you. Sarah, you're a loyal friend and a godly woman. I could not ask for more. Sarah, I purpose to lead you in God's ways and to be your spiritual mentor, encourager, and protector, always striving to keep a peaceful home where you are safe physically, spiritually, and emotionally. I will hear your heart and make time for you, no matter how busy I am. I will believe you and give you benefit of the doubt with listening ears and a patient heart. I will accept you just as you are and never ne negatively compare you to anyone. I will support you and try to enjoy things you like, which I don't. <laughs> I will never stop pursuing you and learning from you. I will make life decisions with you as a team and be an active part of our family. I will be faithful and supportive and purpose to make our family's love and happiness my priority. I commit to be a diligent provider and will be honest with you, only doing you good all the days of my life. I, Alex, take you, Sarah, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and health, to love and to cherish, until we are parted by death. These are my promises to you before God and these witnesses. Sarah? Alex, I have always respected, admired, and looked up to you. And over the <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> over the past two years, you somehow finagled your way into my heart through all the protective walls and became my best friend and safe haven. In today's generation, it's getting harder to find men who who are wholeheartedly following and serving God. So to find a man who is as visionary yet laid back and passionately loving and serving God like you was incredible. I am so often amazed by your spiritual insights and the wisdom and perception that God has given you. I trust you and who God is making you to lead me, and I give you all that I am and all that I have. By God's grace, I, Sarah, take you, Alexander, to be my wedded husband, and these things I promise you. From this day forward, I purpose to be a wise woman who builds her house with her hands and does not tear it down. I promise to honor, reverence, and obey you, submitting to myself to you as the church should to Christ. I will walk beside you and stand with you, supporting you in all your endeavors, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, as long as we both shall live. I'll pray for you and grow with you. I'll be resourceful and creative flexible and adventurous. I will fill the gas tank when it reaches the halfway mark <laughs> instead of letting it go empty. <laughs> I'll cherish you and strive to be joyful, transparent, and live life the fullest with you. I'll respect your integrity and have faith in your abiding love for me. I'll always be your biggest fan and your little one. This is my covenant to you in solemn vow. Thank you. Alex, do you have a ring for Sarah? I do. The wedding ring is an outward visible sign of an inward spiritual bond that unites two lives in the covenant of marriage. The circle, because it has no end, symbolizes permanence. The gold, because it is the metal that is least tarnished and most enduring, symbolizes the lasting and permanent quality of the marriage covenant. Alex, please place that ring on her finger and repeat after me. 
Sarah, I give you this ring. Sarah, I give you this ring. As a symbol of the vows I have made to you today. As a symbol of the vows I have made to you today. Sarah, do you have a ring for Alex? Okay, place your ring on his finger. Repeat after me. Sarah, or Alex, I give you this ring. Alex, I give you this ring. As a symbol of the vows I have made to you today. As a symbol of the vows I have made to you today. <laughs> Here's a man who doesn't want to be half married. As some of you know, Sarah lived in the Philippines for a time doing mission work. While she was there, she had the honor of being part of a Filipino wedding. She and Alex would like to include some of those traditions in this ceremony today. Where are the veil carriers? Over here, okay. The first tradition is the placing of a veil. The veil symbolizes oneness in marriage and is placed over Alex's shoulders and Sarah's head. This symbolizes that Alex is directly accountable to God who has placed him as the head of the home and has given him the mantle of authority and responsibility for this home. The veil over Sarah's head shows that she is under submission to Alex and his umbrella of protection and will be his helper. Alex and Sarah, as Hank and Amy have laid this veil over you to clothe you together, let this be a symbol of the faithful love you have for each other through Christ. Through the passing of the years, let the veil remind you that you belong to each other and to no one else. The second tradition is the placing of a cord. The circular cord is placed over both of their shoulders and symbolizes the unbreakable bond of marriage. God has specifically given the husband authority in the marriage, but because Alex and Sarah are Christians, they are equal under God and equally important to God. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Alex and Sarah, as Chris and Olivia have placed this cord around you, let it remind you that you are no longer two, but one in marriage. May you both face your lives together courageously and mutually support each other as you carry out your duties and responsibilities as a couple. May your love grow stronger and bind you closer together through the years. Jesus. 
Yeah.